Seeker, written by Susanna Thompson, performed by Heather Firth. Chapter 35 Our vacation in Florida is the pleasant diversion that my relationship with Silas needed. Contrary to what Justin assumed was the reason I secretly invited Silas to go with me, sex is not in our plans. Even if my parents hadn't found out that Silas would be there, we still wouldn't have done anything sexual, because we were keeping to Silas's kissing-only rule. It was really nice to be with Silas without any pressure from him to go further. I could enjoy myself with my boyfriend in the hotel pool, on the beach, and at Disney World. He had never been on an amusement park ride, and I had fun going on the rides with him and seeing him experience them for the first time. He laughed in delight after the roller coaster dropped us down a hill at a thrilling speed. I smile when we see little kids running up to Disney characters, while Silas and I hold hands as we stroll through the park. Someday we'll bring our kids here, I tell him. My steps falter when I realize what I've just said, I spoke the words so easily and naturally, like any other girl talking about the future with the guy she loves. Although I have to admit that my feelings for Silas are stronger than my feelings for Scott were, I'm not in love with him. Yet my life feels entwined with his on a basic level that is separate from my romantic feelings for him. I consider again what he said about fate— and I can no longer deny its power to bring two people together. I acknowledge that it did bring us together, but why? Remembering Silas's claim that I was seeking him, I wonder why it was specifically him when I could see others of his kind. He lost the ability to see them when he became human, but I can still see them. What is it about me that makes me different? Why has fate chosen Silas to be with me? I will enjoy bringing our children here, he says. His dark eyes are no longer the pitch black eyes he had when he was deaf. There are graduations of color between his pupils and the dark brown of his irises. They are human eyes now, expressive and full of life. In them, I see the warmth of his feelings for me and his happiness in mentioning the children we will have. I am overwhelmed by the strength of my own feelings for these children who don't yet exist. It's not just a pleasant daydream to me, but an indescribable maternal instinct that I've never felt before. Whenever I thought about having kids before, it was a vague assumption about my distant future. Now the desire for them is intense beyond anything I've ever wanted before. I want to have your children, I tell him with surety, even though I haven't even thought about it until now. I want to be your husband and the father of your children, he agrees. I want to marry you and be the mother of your children, I declare and truly mean it. It makes no sense that I've made this decision so suddenly, and only because of my strong desire to have these children we are talking about. Nothing has ever felt so right as the thought of bringing them into this world. I don't want to wait two more years, I complain. I want to marry you now. He is thrilled by my declaration, but then his expression falls. Your parents will not give us permission. I'm disappointed to realize that he's right. My mom will not be convinced by my plea that I need to have children. She'll insist that I have to finish high school first and be an adult before I can get married. Wait, I exclaim excitedly. I'll be an adult next year. We won't have to wait two years. I'll be 18 next summer. He smiles at me in pure happiness. We can get married next summer? Yes, I shout, and throw my arms around him with joy. Every doubt I had about us is gone. Our future is a bright beacon before me now, and I have my sights set unwaveringly on it. I'm certain that nothing will affect it, 
and that we'll be together as fate intended.